Hi there. So, we're going to put on some tefillin right now. Now, if all goes well, when uh, you bought your tefillin and are taking the tefillin out for the first time, or uh, since the last time that you uh, put away your tefillin, the one that is going to be closest to the top of your tefillin bag, if you have a tefillin bag, will be the tefillin shel yad. The tefillin shel yad means the tefillin of the hand. And the tefillin of the hand are uh, the kinds of straps that are going to go around your arm and around your hand. And we're going to first put them on our hands. Now, uh, or rather our arm, that is. I'm going to tell you that I'm doing one thing right now that you should probably never do when you're putting on tefillin, unless you're instructing someone how to wear tefillin or you're asking a question related to tefillin, because we actually... Uh, focus so much on the mitzvah that we don't talk when we put on tefillin. We focus on the mitzvah. So I guess if you, if you want to talk about something related to the mitzvah of tefillin, then, uh, then it's good to talk because you want to make sure that everyone's doing the mitzvah to their best. I'm going to show you how to put the tefillin on, tefillin on by the way, in two different ways. Uh, and there are many different ways of putting on tefillin correctly. Uh, to say that there's only one correct way is uh, probably uh, not fair. Uh, though there are people who are very adamant that the way that they do it is correct. I am very adamant that the way that I do it is one of many different correct ways. And uh, I'm sure that someone could look at what I do and say, uh, it's no good. But to me, it's pretty good. Uh, and it has a lot of meaning, and I'll tell you a little bit about the meaning. So the first thing that you want to do is, uh, by the way, the Tfilin Shel Yad, you might have noticed that before, uh, and I'll uh, put it back in its shape at the end, but you'll notice that it's probably, if wrapped correctly, going to look sort of uh, like there's uh, almost an oval-shaped cinnamon roll around the tefillin box. Now, there are a lot of people who will tell you that this little, uh, you'll see there's a little bit of a jagged box. I'll bring it up close to the camera for you to see. There's this little jagged box uh, it's sort of got a hole in it, and it's got a little hole here. You can see uh, this jagged box, which uh, goes on the tefillin. Uh, when I've got the tefillin up close, you'll notice that the jagged hole is near sort of a more jagged end of the tefillin. You see this little jag here, and then there's that little jag I'll show you by lifting it up again. You see? Um, some people, a lot of people keep this on when they put on their tefillin, uh, and they do find a lot of meaning in that. I have found that my tefillin don't stay on well, or at least that this part doesn't stay on well when I wear it. But I think about it when I put on my tefillin, uh, and uh, I'm sure there are people who would object to that. Uh, I'm not going to object to it because... I think that if your tefillin are falling off the entire time, it's not going to be as meaningful an experience. Um, uh, though you can expect that for the first uh, three weeks of doing it, that they'll be slipping and sliding for a while. Uh, anyway, I'm going to come up close for just a moment to show you exactly what I'm doing with my arm here. I'm taking my arm, and by the way, you've noticed that I've rolled up my sleeve. I am wearing short sleeves today, but I've rolled up my sleeve because I'm going to have to put my tefillin right uh, up here. Uh, the idea of putting the tefillin shel yad up here uh, is going to be so that way this box of tefillin, inside of which are words from the Torah, uh, it does say that our tefillin should be at our heart. And uh, th that is uh, the way that the rabbis interpret this. And we want to make sure that when I put on my tefillin, which I'm going to do right now, you'll see, that I've got a loop um, that has uh, sort of at this end, which is uh, when I'm going to put it on me, you'll see that I'm going to have this loop that is uh, coming upwards and then sliding down and through. I'm putting my tefillin on such that the tefillin box is going to be facing my heart. And this tefillin box is going to droop if I leave it exactly the way that it is. So I have to tighten it. 
right now you can see I'm pulling very tightly on my arm. And what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see, but I'm not going to keep on wrapping in the direction of the natural flow, but to keep it tight, I'm actually going to wrap in the exact opposite direction right now. I'm going to wrap right now counterclockwise. Before it was going clockwise, this is counterclockwise now. And I'm creating two loops here. And ideally, I should be getting two loops that are not going to be touched by the tefillin straps themselves and not by the tefillin box itself. So I'm actually going to pull this up a little higher so that I can really get this. So I got one, and I've got two. And now, now that I've got two straps on my upper arm, beyond the elbow, I'm going to have to create seven more straps. And by the way, before I put on those seven straps, I'm going to say the first of two berachot, blessings, that I'm going to say when I put on my tefillin straps. The first one goes like this. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kidashanu Bemitzvotav Vetsivanu Lehaniach Tefillin. And that means, Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has sanctified us and given us holy connections. Uh, through mitzvot, and uh, especially in the mitzvah of laying our tefillin across ourselves. Now, a lot of Ashkenazic Jews actually wrap their tefillin clockwise rather than counterclockwise. And by the way, did you see that I've created seven straps here? And uh, I didn't quite do them very well, so, and this is actually part of putting on tefillin too, is uh, noticing that you don't do a good job all the time. So I'm going to create seven straps that are, I want them to be pretty evenly uh, divided. I want there to be not a whole lot of space and not too little space between any of them. And uh, you might notice also, I'm having a little trouble here. I've got a chair that's in the way, but uh, the reason I've got the chair in the way is because I could actually be doing this on a table. I want to make sure that my tefillin straps which are holy objects, never touch the floor. The floor is a place where all sorts of dirty things, uh, you know, uh, land and crawl across. God, you know, forbid sometimes. But anyway, we're, uh, we always clean our floors as best as we can, but we keep our holy objects off the floors. Like, we don't put a sidur, a prayer book there, or anything that would contain God's name. Now, you'll see I did a little bit of a better job because I was uh, really at a table this time. You'll see there's seven straps here. Uh, I'm not going to count them for you, but I'm going to say a verse that has seven words in it. Uh, the Jews often don't like to count. They like to say not one, not two, not three. Or they like to say uh, uh, very often uh, a verse that has the certain number of words of the number that they want to be counting. And it's because there are all these times in the Tanakh, in the Hebrew Bible, where someone is taking a census and then something terrible happens to the Jewish people. So we figure... Uh, I don't like plagues, you probably don't like plagues, so we're never going to avoid the plagues. We're going to put on our tefillin by saying a verse that has seven words in it, and the seven verse, uh, sorry, seven word verse that I'm going to say right now is Poteach et yadecha umasbia lecholchai ratzon. And I said all seven words while pointing out uh, another different uh, uh, piece of, uh, another uh, loop of uh, tefillin wrapped around me. Okay, now, you're going to notice I've got all this tefillin left over. What do I do with this strap? So I'm going to take this strap that would be the eighth wrap around, and instead I'm going to strap it diagonally across my hand to go in between my thumb and my index finger. And I'm going to flip this around, and you'll see I'm going to create a straight line across my thumb and my rest of the palm. And you'll see that right now I'm creating just a straight line because we're going to come back to the tefillin shelyad. But for the meantime, 
we're going to just wrap up the rest and I'll show you what I did here. If I just kept on making a straight line, I'd eventually run out. So I had to tuck this in. I had to tuck the remnant beneath and you'll see I've got a, the remnant tucked in. Okay, now I hope that didn't seem too complicated. Most people aren't as klutzy as I am. There is usually uh, one person who's uh, last at Minions, and uh, that person's usually wrapping their tefillin back very slowly, probably schmoozing with somebody. Um, that person's always, you know, 15 minutes late or so. Uh, I, I leave after that guy. Okay, anyway, uh, we are going to uh, take out of our tefillin bag now our tefillin shilosh, which means the tefillin of the head. And I'll show you up close, actually, that the tefillin shel rosh, if wrapped properly, uh, which uh, some things apparently happened the last time I wrapped it, but uh, you'll see that they're usually wrapped in such a way that there are two loops, one loop here, one loop here. It looks almost like a tractor. And uh, I am going to let the straps go, and you'll notice that there are two sides to the tefillin shel rosh, whereas for the tefillin shel yad, uh, you might have noticed that there was only one strap that I was really wrapping around. Uh, there was uh, sort of a circular loop uh, way back up here. Um, and you'll see, by the way, that I've got that tefillin at my heart uh, when I bend in my arm. And uh, right now I'm going to take my tefillin shel rosh out. And again, I want to make sure that nothing touches the floor. I'm going to put the tefillin shalosh on my head now. And I'm going to do this and say, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kideshanu B'mitzvotav Vetzivanu Al Mitzvat Tefillin. And I'm going to take the two straps that were behind me, and I'm going to do this up close again, just so you can see more here clearly. Uh, I'm going to take this. I'm going to pull down these straps, and as I pull down these straps, I'm going to recite, Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Va'ed. Blessed are you, uh, sorry, blessed is the name of the Holy One whose uh, kingdom, whose uh, sovereignty, whose rulership is for eternity and forever. I'm going to take my head tefillin off for instructional purposes. Typically, once you put it on, you don't take it off again. And uh, some people wear kippot that are so large they have to take their kippah off and on before they put their tefillin shirosh on and off. And uh, I'm going to show you again how I do this up close. I'm going to tilt the camera just a little higher so you get a good view. Or, you know, a decent view, I don't know. Uh, you're going to put your tefillin shirosh on in such a way that you might see there's this little knot here. I want to get this knot. Uh, you, you might feel if you touch behind your head, there's a little bone that juts out a little bit. Uh, it's sort of uh, somewhere between like where your forehead would be if your face were backwards and uh, where your uh, mouth is. I don't know. Somewhere around there. But it's sort of in the back of your neck. There's a little bone there. You want to get the knot back there. And you want to also make sure that uh, when you're saying that blessing, which by the way meant, blessed are you, Lord our God, uh, ruler of the universe, uh, who has sanctified us and connected us through holy commandments, uh, in giving us the mitzvah of tefillin. Al mitzvah tefillin, we said this time, not lehaniach tefillin. And the reason why we're talking about a second mitzvah of tefillin is because the rabbis actually uh, aren't clear on just exactly how many mitzvot, uh, how many commandments we really have when it comes to wearing tefillin, but we know that we have to have the words of Torah between our eyes. And uh, when I think of the words of Torah being between our eyes, I think of it not only in terms of uh, um, uh, being, you know, whoop, between my eyes, but I also think of it in terms of uh, seeing the world through a lens of Torah. Uh, and what a powerful thing to be able to see the world in a way where I'm always loving God. Uh, that's a very important thing. I talk a little bit about that in uh, the uh, preliminary instructional video that uh, I've also uh, posted. You can watch that one too. 
but you've got this uh, in between the eyes thing. And by the word, the he by the way, the word in Hebrew for between uh, apparently is related to. Uh, I recall learning, I'm not sure if it's true, that in Ugaritic there is a word that means above and between that is basically the equivalent of the Hebrew word bain, that bain in Ugaritic apparently means uh, above and between. So that's how we know that it's not, uh, you know, with a box in front of my eyes, but that it's above and between my eyes. And you want to make sure that it's sort of at your hairline, which for people like me has to be sort of a little bit of fiction, but uh, you see uh, just a little below your hairline, you want to make sure that the Tefillin isn't too much on your hair as much as possible. And as you straighten out those straps from back there, you want to make sure that everyone's seeing just the black side. I should have mentioned that earlier, but you're just seeing the black side of the straps. And as you lay them down, you say, Baruch Shem Kevod Machuto Le'olam Va'ed. And if all is well, you should be able to see that my tefillin are uh, in good shape right now. Now got this thing to deal with. we got to come back to the hand. Um, uh, I guess if you like it, then you should put tefillin on it. Okay, we uh, like our hands. We believe that we do good work with our hands. And there are different ways of approaching this hand part. Uh, you'll see that one of the ways to do this hand part is uh, many sidurim, many prayer books, say that what we should say here are some words from uh, the prophet Hosea uh, from chapter 3, uh, uh, or chapter 2, I guess it says in the Siddur. I thought it was chapter 3. I'll look later. Uh, but those words are Ve'erastich li le'olam, Ve'erastich li betzedek uv mishpat uv chesed uv rachamim, Ve'erastich li ve'emunah ve'edat et Adonai. And I'll just read you the translation here. Uh, that's in the Siddur. I don't actually say these words, and I'll tell you why in a moment. It says, I betroth you to me forever. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, uh, quoting God. I betroth you to me with righteousness and justice, with love and compassion. I betroth you to me with faithfulness, that then shall you be at one with Adonai. Uh, which is a nice message of uh, uh, almost as if we're getting married to God every single day. The reason I don't say these words uh, actually comes down to a teaching uh, from, uh, I don't know who the student was uh, who said this to my teacher, Rabbi Dr. Neil Gilman Zichroli Vracha of blessed memory, but uh, Rabbi Gilman taught my class that he once had a, a rabbinical student who said that she refused to wear tefillin. And why was the reason that she refused to wear tefillin? It was because uh, these words from Hosea actually appear right after uh, the people Israel are likened to a woman who uh, this rabbinical student read as uh, being abused by God and uh, beaten and physically, uh, physically hurt. And uh, this rabbinical student said, you see, this is exactly what abusers always do. Abusers always beat you, and then they talk about how much they love you. So she said, that can't be my God. I can't put on tefillin and pray to that God. So I guess she did not wear tefillin. I don't know if she's a rabbi today. Uh, she probably is a rabbi, and uh, if she isn't a rabbi, I'm sure she's teaching good Torah in the world. And uh, ever since I learned that, I uh, thought about that quite hard, and eventually I came across a verse that I liked better, uh, which is, Vayar Adonav. This is about Joseph, that Joseph's masters and Joseph's lords saw, Ki Adonai Ito, that God was with him, that God was with Joseph, v'chol asher hu oseh, and that all that Joseph would do, Adonai matzliach beyado, that God would bring success to Joseph's hands. And I like to think that the success of God's Torah should come through my hands when I really intend on focusing well on uh, the tefillin. So, I always say that verse, uh, which is from Genesis, Genesis chapter 39, verse 3. I always say that verse when I put on my tefillin. So here's what we're going to do. I just undid what was on my hand. My hand feels way better, by the way. I'm going to do what I did before, though. I'm going to, again, place that strap flat 
across diagonally. Again, you'll see I have that extra almost eighth one, but it's not quite eighth because uh, the eighth one is going across my palm. And now I'm going to flip my hand around and you're going to see that I'm going to take my tefillin up to the bottom of my middle finger. I'm going to show you. I'm going to wrap it around the bottom of my middle finger. And I'm going to show you again. I'm going to take it to the top of my middle finger. And I'm going to wrap it around that middle finger. And I'm going to wrap it to my index finger's bottom. And now I'm going to wrap it around my ring finger. And wrap it around across from my ring finger to between my thumb and my index finger. And now I've got to do something very important, which is I have to create a uh, straight line across my hand. So I'm going to just make a straight line like this. And again, I've got this extra tefillin. I'm going to tuck it in. And what I'm left with should be the letters Shin, or even on this side, you can even see a little Shin. Shin, sort of upside down. Shin. And I have to find the letter Dalit. And I have here, I have here a letter Dalit. And I also have here a little letter Yud. Got a Yud there or a Dalit there. There's different ways of finding the different letters, but you want to find the letters Shin, Dalit, and Yud. Shin, Dalit, Yud spell out one of God's names, Shaddai, which uh, is a name that people don't really know exactly what it means. Some people say it means the God who said enough, that we God's created enough of creation and that God did enough good work. And some people say that Shaddai means... Uh, my sustainer uh, and uh, uh, my nourisher. And some people say that Shaddai is a abbreviation for Shomer de la Tot Yisrael, the guardian of the doors and the houses of Israel, and God protects Jewish homes. Uh, there are a lot of different meanings to Shaddai, but we like to make sure that we can spell God's name in our hands. So we've got Shaddai right here. All right. Now, you should know how to put on tefillin. Well, that took only like 23 minutes. That's pretty good. All right, so uh, here we go. We're going to take off these tefillin. Uh, usually, when I'm putting on my tefillin, I'm not doing this much instruction. Uh, uh, I have been in situations where I'm instructing quite a lot. The way that you take off your tefillin is, a, is uh, the exact reverse of how you put it on. So I'm going to take off the tefillin shell yad, but just the yad part, just the hand part, not the arm part. And as I take it off, I'm going to put my hand back to the situation where I had a single strap, uh, basically, rather than a whole bunch of straps spelling out Shin Dalet Yud on my hand uh, that I would have God's name on my hand. Right now it's just uh, like a, basically a single line. I did a little sloppy. It's okay. Uh, God, God, uh, God understands my feeling problems in life. Uh, and uh, I'm going to take my tefillin shalosh off now. And there's no special bracha that I should say or that you should say when taking off your tefillin shalosh. Again, it's good to concentrate so much on this mitzvah that you're not talking to other people. And uh, by the way, you want to make sure that your box that you have is the tefillin shalosh box when you're putting the tefillin shalosh away. And I'm going to show you exactly how to put away the tefillin shalosh, or at least the way that I do it. So I've got this empty box. I got this tefillin. I gotta fit the tefillin inside the box. Easy schmeezy. Now I gotta close the box. Not as easy schmeezy. You, uh, you have to tuck it in for some reason. I don't know why it doesn't close automatically like that. Okay. Maybe your box is better than mine. Maybe you have a better dealer. Okay. I am uh, going to put this tefillin box down and 
You see, I got this droopy thing. I don't want this droopy thing. I want it to stop drooping. I'm going to pick it all up. And now I've got some elephant ears. Uh, I've got to flip this elephant ear across this feeling box on this way. And I'm going to flip this elephant ear over too. And do you see how flat it is? Wow. That's cool. Okay. Now I'm going to have to do something about these two hanging straps though. I've got one strap hanging here and I'm going to roll the strap forward. You'll see, I'm creating a tractor wheel basically. And I don't really have to tuck in the extra tefillin because if you have a tefillin bag that's as small as mine anyway, uh, the truth is that uh, there isn't a whole lot of space for the tefillin to become undone. And I'm doing the same sort of tractor wheel situation on the other side of my tefillin shavrosh box. And when I put on my tefillin next, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my tefillin shal yad on first again. So I'm gonna put this back in my tefillin box. Sorry, my tefillin bag. So I'm putting my tefillin shavrosh box back. Boom. Uh, there's nothing special you need to say when you're putting away the tefillin shel wash or the tefillin shel yad again. And by the way, I'm just undoing the straps that I have. Of course, the way that I do it, I end up with tefillin all over my other arm. By the way, I should have said this at minute one, but I didn't. Uh, you probably figured it out by now. Uh, maybe not. But I am a righty, and I put my tefillin on my left arm. Why is this? I like to strengthen my less strong arm. So if you're a righty, you put your right, you put your tefillin on your uh, left arm as long as you have a left arm. And if you're a lefty and you have a right arm, you put your tefillin on your right arm. If you have only one arm, you put it on your arm. Uh, if you don't have an arm, uh, tefillin is a whole other thing that we need to talk about. Uh, and I'm happy to discuss that one on one with you because there are people who don't have arms. Uh, but uh, for the meantime. Uh, sorry, let me come a little closer to the camera. I'll show you exactly what I'm doing here. This is pretty intuitive. Do you remember uh, that we uh, talked about how there's this little half box thing? Uh, you you want to make sure that you don't leave Minion with uh, without it. Uh, you want to make sure it's in the box when you're putting away your tefillin shaliyad. You want to make sure that you're, again, tightening it as much as possible, uh, and you're going to just sort of create sort of this uh, oval-shaped cinnamon roll across your tefillin box. Uh, it'll probably not taste so good. Um, I've never eaten uh, cow skin before. I assume that's what it's made of. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, uh, you, yeah, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, we can talk about that later. Now, now I feel like we're just having minion talk at this point. Anyway, I'm putting my tefillin around. Oh, look at that cinnamon roll. Mm -hmm, pretty delicious. Uh, I'm wrapping it up and I am going to tuck in the remnant because this one, uh, this one could get undone. Uh, and this could be an ugly sight if it gets undone. So uh, I, I like to keep the cinnamon roll as much as possible. So I'm just tucking in a little bit. Um, there's different ways of doing it. Uh, the truth is that the most important thing is that we're putting it on correctly. The putting away the most important thing is that we're doing it respectfully and in a way that's not going to damage the tefillin. Uh, some people say that it's very important that you're dry when you're wearing your tefillin, uh, which is to say that if you uh, uh, were running to Minyan, you might want to uh, dry off your face if you started to schwitz quite a lot, if you're sweating. Uh, and uh, if you uh, are in a swimming pool, don't wear your tefillin in the swimming pool. And if you're underwater, don't wear your tefillin underwater. If you're uh, coming out of the swimming pool, you can wear the tefillin once you've dried yourself off, because otherwise you can destroy the tefillin. And uh, the reason that that's a problem is not only that it's a holy object, but we never want to damage God's name. And God's name is written in those tefillin, because we've got parchment paper inside. All right, I'm putting away my talit, but the talit is not necessary piece for you to know necessarily. If you ever have any questions, you can write... Uh, to me, 
I am uh, jonah.rank at gmail.com, at least as of this video being made, and I hope that you enjoy the mitzvah of wearing tefillin as much as I do. All right, very good.